on our first ever annual swim lessons podcast, it was without a doubt in my mind who I was going to have on. I, I remember telling Nick, my producer, that he's like, who are we going to have on? What what should we hit this uh, podcast off with a bang? And I just knew him deep down in my heart that it had to be Tony Florio. Tony's an interesting guy because he's from the East Coast, um, grew up kind of rough um, around some interesting characters, but it created this really cool, genuine person who today is older and is very wise and kind of knows a lot about how just to grind through life and to make sure that you're making the most out of every opportunity because you truly don't know when it could be your last. And so Tony, on when he came on Swim Lessons, we had a lot of laughs. It kind of turned into a roast of, of Dallas Hanson, to be 100% honest, but that's okay. And, and Tony is a great friend of mine. So on the first ever episode of Swim Lessons, I give you the legendary, goat-worthy, Tony Florio. Here come the Bowers. Y'all ready to go swimming, baby? Come on. Give it up. Get out of that water. I tried telling y'all, it's swim lessons, baby. <laughs> Dude, we're here, Tony. We're here. It's, it's been taking a, a long time. <laughs> It's taking a long time, dude. It's so good to have you yeah. here, my man. You are one of my favorite people in the whole wide world. Same here. To have you as my first guest on this new adventure I'm trying with Swim Lessons is an absolute honor and pleasure. Um, I'm honored to be here. Yeah, so this is Tony Florio. Uh, I just want to introduce yourself a little bit to the people out in podcast world. Hey, podcast land. How are you doing? <laughs> um, my name's Tony. I'm originally from New Jersey. Now I live in glorious Arizona. Um, we're going to talk about some of the old times back in New Jersey. <laughs> yes, we uh, are. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the uh, fun things that we've talked about over the years. Uh, make fun of some people. Uh, <laughs> hopefully we don't get sued, but we won't use last names. <laughs> So if you think it's you that I'm talking about, that's your own personal problem. I don't give a fuck. That's right. Now, Tony, swim lessons, I was kind of telling you before we went live here, is about overcoming obstacles, overcoming, getting through the tough stuff, getting right to the bare bones of things. And you are, the, if there's, if that's, there, you are the thing in the dictionary when it comes to that. You know exactly what to do. So take me back to the early days of your childhood when growing up in New Jersey, being around, you know, the, the types of people that <laughs> that you were around. Just take me back really quick and, and take us back. Okay, well, I grew up in uh, Hoboken, New Jersey, which is a really nice place now, mm -hmm. but it used to be really, really uh, raw. It was blue collar. Uh, six years old, I was hanging out at a pool room that my father used to work at. I, I'd be there till 11 o'clock at night on a Friday night, pump, punching people's tickets in the pool pool hall, mm -hmm. uh, making coffee, doing all kinds of wild stuff, seeing all these people, you know. I was transfixed by it, though, because it was just, you could tell that these people, they, they weren't normal, you know. And I was only six years old, but <laughs> I'm going, there's something wrong with these people. For, first grade during the day and then pool night at, at night. <laughs> Actually, I learned to pool, play pool at like six years old because I'm six, seven. I was I was really tall. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, my father was only 5'8", so, you know, um, there was always this suspicion with my mother, but you know, we, we don't want to dis disperse her <laughs> reputation. But you know, um, it, it was really a, an upbringing. Like I grew up fast in a lot of ways. Yeah. Like my my mother was for like the one who would shelter you, but my father, when I'd go with him, he'd bring me to the pool hall. Yeah. You know. And yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Let's play some pool. Eat some gabagool. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> hanging out with the bookies and. Uh, to where I found out later on were mobsters and all kinds of shit, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but they always treated me good. Yeah, hell you know, yeah, man. Because my father grew up with a lot of them, and uh, this was the neighborhood my father grew up in, Newark and Adam in, in Hoboken, and uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. What know? was what was like when you, what was like the first thing, if you can think about it, that you're like, okay, hold, this is this is a, a, a different spot. This isn't, you know, the, this is the pool hall. This is where things are going down, you know? Oh, uh, well, when one of this guy, uh, one of the guys that used to hang out there, his name was Cowboy, he got his head blown off. <laughs> Not there, but, but they, down they, the street. they executed him. Is, you've seen The Irishman, right? Yeah. Is that pretty close to how things were? Okay, I'll be honest with you. The guy who they claim killed Hoffa, Sally Bergulio, yeah. was a great friend of my father's. No shit. Yeah. Uh, him, that's the, the two Andrettas, my father knew them. He knew Tony Pro. Yeah. Because he was the head of the, the local 560, and my father was a truck driver during the day. Okay. So I met these people, and uh, 
Bergoglio was a very interesting guy. My father always said he dressed like a priest. He acted like a priest. But um, he was known as a cold-blooded just killer. Really? Yeah. So, okay, now you're six. Now you're in the pool halls. Okay, now what's the next step? What's teenage life like? Like, what? now you're in the city. Are you, are you kind of starting to go into New York? Are you still around New Jersey? Oh, no, we went about seventh or eighth grade. We, we lived in... <laughs> Eighth we... grade graduation. We're going out. <laughs> yeah, no prisoners. Come on, we'll be back Sunday. Uh, but anyway, uh, we would start sneaking into New York. Like we'd get. I went to Catholic school, so we had a lot of days off. And yeah. you know, nothing worse than Catholic school kids yeah. who were told not to do this, this, and this. And then we're going to Forty Second Street at seven years old. I mean, at, at thirteen years old. Where we lived, the path train was 30 cents uh, from Hoboken to Midtown. So we'd get off at 33rd Street, walk up there. We'd walk all around the, the city. Uh, and you got a real perspective with it. And I got to learn the city a lot because my father, in the summertime, he would do the city run uh, for a company called Borum and Peas. And I would go with him because by then I was 6'2". And I would do the deliveries while he was stuck in traffic. And we'd get done early. But I got to see the city from you know, Canal Street to 59th Street to the Central Park from east side to west side. What, so, what was it like back then? Uh, in the 70s? Uh, yeah. It, it was, Times Square was a disgrace. What do you mean? It was all porno. <laughs> You'd come out of the tunnel, the Lincoln Tunnel, and the, the prostitutes would put their tits right on your window. <laughs> oh, I can about imagine. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that's, <laughs> and so it's changed a little bit. Yeah, they, well, they actually, what they did, they Giuliani, condemned everything yeah. and uh, they sold it to Disney for like 10 cents on a dollar you're so, kidding no now it's all cleaned up there's no porno shops at all really yeah and you know with the porno shops they of course they had these the crack hoes that were yeah. was, we didn't know it was crack back then <laughs> yeah 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 but uh, you had all these women that you didn't even want to breathe the same air they were breathing <laughs> but uh and then you had all the derelicts, the dirt bags that yeah. would hang out there. I mean, it was horrible. People would be dead on the street. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Or freeze to death. It was just disgusting. Just Condoms everywhere. <laughs> you know, Used I, or unused? <laughs> both. But honestly, a snake skin. Yeah. No, no. If you were going to screw one of these broads, you needed a condom built by fucking Michelin with steel-belted radio. No way. No, there, I, there, isn't, there isn't penicillin strong enough to take these bitches out. <laughs> so... Now, when you graduate high school, young Tony Florio out in the streets doing your thing, what was your life like back then? It was really interesting. Uh, I already was doing Aikido for a long time. I had a lot of older friends. So um, I got to see a lot of things. I uh, had some friends who introduced me who were mentors, but also introduced me to like a, a different kind of life. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I can't mention names. These people no, are that's still cool. alive. No, no worries. But people, one of my friends owned a bar. Yeah. From the time I was 14 years old, I'd sit at the bar and drink. <laughs> Seriously. Really? Yeah. What was your shot at, what was your drink back then? Rum and Coke. Really? And That's Heineken. my drink now. <laughs> yeah, I don't drink soda anymore, So, but I used oh, to drink yeah. Heineken. Uh, that was the hot drink in the 70s. Heineken. Yeah. The, the gold bottle. The green bottle. The green bottle. Oh, yeah. Got Sorry, a fucking yeah. Irishman in here. <laughs> I know. It's a great, God damn it, green. Um, so you're at the, what was, what was the bar? You weren't paying attention in preschool, were you? <laughs> No, I missed that chapter. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so you're now you're post high school. Where yeah. where is young Tony Florio at right now? All right, life? I'm working in a supermarket, okay. uh, which was eye opening. Uh, you got to remember, this is still Hoboken, and Hoboken is full of weirdos. Yeah, we had Pat the Man, who was the first transgender, practically ever. Really, this was a guy who had operations. He had. 48 D's and he used to have a sh he rode his bike all over Hoboken and he always wore a low cut blouse really and he was surgically changed and you know you just it's like when people started talking about transgender I'm like that happened 30 years ago yeah it's, not a big deal it was just Pat the man <laughs> At the man. Yeah, and then there's guy, you know, there were guys like they called Puppy. Uh, there was uh, Popcorn. <laughs> there were these people had all these weird names yeah. because they were all freaks. I, I love how whenever you tell a story, you, there's a, a nickname connected to all these people. With everybody. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was who, who was Jimmy the Axe. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, Buzzy the Ice Pick. Uh, now, you didn't really... I don't know this for sure, for the sake of this podcast. Yeah. But that was usually their mode of operation when they were mugging you or killing you. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, know? Yeah. But yeah, there was a lot there was a lot of a lot of freaky people out there, yeah. you know. And uh 
But yeah, Pat the Man was the best. We were kids. We, we just accepted it. Okay, yeah, that's Pat. Nice guy, you know. Uh, Gal, whatever. <laughs> well, they, they didn't get rid of the Adam's apple, okay? <laughs> they yeah. didn't do that back then. Yeah. And he had hands bigger than mine. Really? He was he, that big? Oh, yeah. He was about 6'4". Really? Yeah, it was great. Holy shit. And you couldn't make fun of him. He'd kick your ass. Oh, yeah, I bet. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, we were t- when, when was your first trip to Studio 54? 17. No shit. When, what was that like? I, well, first, explain to the folks what Studio 54 was. I was this uh, hedonistic, uh, famous place where everybody went. Yep. And people um, did weird shit, like, you know, Liza Minnelli would be there, and uh, what's his name? Andy Warhol. Uh, oh, Tony's getting a call. Uh-oh, it's from New Jersey. Maybe I should <laughs> shut up. <laughs> It's You're talking about it. We're gonna it's give a you... 201 number. <laughs> I'm in trouble. We're going to give you concrete shoes, Florio. <laughs> That's the easy way to go out. <laughs> uh, but anyway. <laughs> anyway, a friend of mine uh, whose father, uh, the nice way to put it, his father was very influential yeah. in um, certain markets in New York that maybe weren't legal. Right. Okay. But they handled all the bouncers and they handled all the all the stuff. What uh, was it like inside? Oh my God. Yeah, uh, it was really shocking. I mean, you know, you think Because it's a dance club. It's like disco and no, shit. No, no, no. It was it was a dance club, sure. But uh <laughs> it was There's... the first place I ever saw that had unisex bathrooms. Because really? It was just everybody in unison having sex. Right. You know, the it bathrooms was bathrooms <laughs> Oh guys, girls. It was yeah. fucking <laughs> <laughs> Wild. Out on the ba- first of all, when you went to the bathroom, uh, you couldn't wash your hands, okay? Well, with all the diseases in the air, oh, it didn't matter. God. But no, because all the Coke was on it. Was in the bathroom. Yeah, and they had a guy in there that was rolling joints, for, you know, lighting up hash for you, filling your pipes if you wanted them. Yeah, it's just like, you know, you gave the It was guy like a buffet bucks. of drugs. Yeah, he put it, you know, he <laughs> put, it, put it on a mirror, gave you, uh, you know, a little straw to suck it up. I didn't do that stuff. Right. Didn't do that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, and you see all kind of weird crap going on, and you know, guys in the stalls with girls sometimes. Two, yeah. Two guys with one girl. What was that like? You as a young. <laughs> what was that like? As a young guy going in there. I, I mean, knew later on at the night if I saw that girl, I won't go near her. <laughs> yeah. Check place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shower first, please. <laughs> so but who it was, was who was wild? Who was the most? famous person that you saw in studio 54 that you would oh, say oh bianca jagger who's that now mick jagger's first wife oh second really? wife maybe first wife she was there all the time uh there were always a lot of people in there there was always a lot of wise guys in there too what do you mean by what that uh wise guys <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah okay, okay have you watched the movie <laughs> no good fellas no. nothing oh yeah 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 okay okay yeah yeah, yeah. i got you now i'm, okay. I'm picking up i know you now. grew up in uh, north dakota uh <laughs> I mean, what's Here the we... movie? What's the movie you just saw this summer, Jaws? Uh, <laughs> you guys have internet yet? <laughs> Here they come, Nicky. Here come the uh, Nick, my producer. He's he's laughing his ass off. I told you, Tony's great. We don't we don't want Nick to. We, we're mad at Nick. <laughs> All right, just oh, so yeah. you know. <laughs> You know, at my age, I don't need to wait. You know, I get here early, I'm all ready to go, and Nick's making me wait. And I'm saying to myself, do I have another fucking hour left? <laughs> that is so true. But um, now, so your girlfriend in- says that you're always early, and I don't know what the fuck that means, but you're always you're late for us. <laughs> That's all right. Better late than never. But okay, now post studio 54 when do you start kind of let's go to the tickets i want to talk well that's one of the, my main points i want to talk about those tickets that we're talking before we went live oh, with you, the number. No, no, no no that's not tickets the, the, what that, are they called the rackets the rackets that's yeah. that's been something that was before the, the states decide that the government decided that they're going to have a pick three well pick three for mutual horse racing right no pick three you can go to lottery why well, you did grow up and i mean do you have a state fucking lottery <laughs> i mean seriously i'm embarrassed for you we're on tv <laughs> well here if you go to, you're in arizona now where yep. people can read have teeth everything okay so go go slow all right you go in this day you say i want to play to pick three hey get and, that mic close to your face there we okay. go there it we covers go. it too it's better it's, for everybody's there. dinner but anyway you go in there you pick three yeah uh, you ask them i want to play like say 325 straight in box okay, okay. uh and then that the, when the lottery comes on, there's a, usually a girl uh, who's sleeping with somebody at the lottery bit, the, the provision, and she's usually ugly, and she tells you what the numbers are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so back from the 20s, uh, they started the, the the numbers where 
you would put in a dollar, say, and you wanted 325. They would pay back, back like in the 60s and 50s, it was 500 to one. So if you hit that number, uh, you got 500 bucks, plus minus the 50 you had to give the guy. To the guy that gave Otherwise, it, yeah. they wouldn't give you, you, you they'd never play you again. But the number was basically on the paramutual handle uh, from from the tracks. And either it was Aqueduct at the time, uh, in the beginning, well, and then maybe the Meadowlands later on. They did a different cup. Sometimes they did the Hialeah in Florida. So, you know, as a kid, being my father uh, was a gambler, uh, yeah. among other things. Um, I'd have to listen for the radio at night and wait for the handle so that he'd know if he hit or not or how many people he had to pay. And uh, it was, uh, you know, I'd have to go get people money right. or go get money from them. Uh, you know, How old were you? Eight or nine. Really? Yeah, I'd go to people and they and um, give them 20 bucks and they'd give me their paycheck. Seriously, that's why I don't gamble today. Now, that's the God's honest truth. Uh, I don't gamble because of, uh, you know. And they just think, oh, I'm going to get the next one. I'm going to win. I'm going to get this one. Yeah, and then they start playing 15 numbers and they're just doing them straight in box. And meanwhile, the, the, the kids don't have shoes, you know. Yeah. But back then in Hoboken, that's what they were. They were all wanted. Everybody. It was like my father. Some of the horses he bet on are still running, and he's been dead since 96. <laughs> Yeah. They weren't even good enough. That when they, they finally did catch up with those horses, they came around. They were so old, they weren't even good for Alpo. <laughs> they just buried them. Search warrants, Alpo. Yeah, yeah, it was terrible. So what, what was the, what was the craziest story you've got that when you were going to search for, for somebody that wouldn't pay up? You got any cool ones that you can share? <sighs> you don't have to list any names. What's well, just a cool one? Uh, a, a cool one was that um, a guy who asked me to go meet the guy uh, a guy named Murray, nobody knows, well, know that, but uh, Murray owed him a lot of money. And I was at the pool room hanging out with my father, and he said, why don't you go do that? Because I'd get 10 bucks. And back yeah, then, yeah. The, when I was 10, 12 years old, that was good money. I said, that was good money. Yeah. Shit. Shit yeah. The gas was like 30 cents a gallon. Yeah. You know, come on. Yeah. Uh, but, and I'd go, and uh, the guy started running away from me. Now, here I am. Oh, I'm like shit. a 10-year-old kid. Yeah. So now I got to chase him, Right. And then he goes up the stairs. He goes up the fire escape. I got to go after the up the fire escape after him. We're on the roof. He goes, "Get away from me! Get away from me!" He goes, "I got to throw you off the roof." <laughs> and I'm looking at him like, "Yeah, yeah, okay." Uh, and then he comes running towards me, and he and he gives me the money. All right, all right, all right. And and then then he jumped off the roof. You're shitting me. No. I what did you? Say? <laughs> I'm like, fuck. What did you tell your dad? Hey, got the money. I said, got the money, got the but he's not going to gamble anymore. <laughs> he's, not, he's done gambling. <laughs> he's, we won't be gambling. Yeah, I found anymore. out later on that he not only owed, like my father, he owed some bookies some really, really big bucks. He was in deep. He was way over his head. I mean, he was like $15,000 in debt, and he killed himself for his family because they he had insurance. Wow. But that was like weird, you know? I mean, yeah. like, and it, and it first happened that you don't think of like post traumatic stress and stuff. Yeah. But later on in life, I, I, I thought about it and. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. I was just going to ask you how that must have felt as a young yeah, that, kid. And there it. was always other funny stuff, like, you know, uh, not funny, but there was always somebody like, you know, you're a kid. I'm going to smack the shit out of you. Yeah. I said, okay, my father will come get it. And then they said, no, no, no. No. Okay. <laughs> no, no. Here's the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They just did, uh, yeah, a little somber. Some guy lost his life for it, but, you know. Yeah. I couldn't understand why he was running, and he must have thought I was with them or whatever the hell it was, because sometimes I would go first, and then guys would follow me. Really? Oh yeah, I, I would go and I talk to the guy, and then other people would come that were looking for him. Yeah. And then I just turn and walk away because I, I didn't I didn't know nothing. Do you think Do you think um, they might have sent your dad might have sent you there just because they're like, okay, this is a kid, he might this guy might actually give him the money rather than me going there. Do you think that might've been a, yeah. Like a, just a, not a yeah, scheme, I, but like a, yeah, well, they, they did that because they, they, there was a lot of kids that used to do, they, we were called runners. Okay. You know? Uh, and you, you would go around and you'd hang out in the pool room and then someone say, listen, I need this. I need that. Go talk to that when he owes me money, you know, whatever, yeah. whatever you had to do. And, uh, then I'd went home and my mother like, you know, treated me like a veal. <laughs> 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 no, seriously. <laughs> and then I mean, my father, my father was, uh, Grew up on the streets, you know. Uh, he, he only went to third grade. 
Really? Yeah. Yeah. He Why did he just left? Because he was just done with it. He wanted no, no, no. But he grew up. Uh, my father was born in 1918. Uh, I was 40. He was 42 when I was born. What happened was the family owned businesses. Like uh, my, my grandfather had a coal and ice business. Okay. And he needed child labor. Yeah. <laughs> Basically to run up and down and bring the ice up in the summer to coal in the winter. And my my grandmother had a, a little dry goods store. So they the kids they went to school and when they got a little old enough to work. They were pulled out of school. Really? Yeah. So they- Hard life. Yeah. And Damn. You, you worked. You, you worked. worked seven days a week. Man, have things changed? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can't employ kids anymore. Uh, I know you do for certain things, but <laughs> oh that's not for God. this. <laughs> that's just a Tony joke. Tony Flora, everybody. <laughs> that's just a joke. Don't worry. This is a comedy podcast. We're good. Yeah. And, to- and he's going to he's gonna cut that out anyway, <laughs> including my last name, right? <laughs> Dallas Hanson, Crosby, North Dakota. <laughs> Not going to be hard to find. Just look for the horse that's walking a little bow-legged. <laughs> Damn, Tony. Um, now tell me, you're, are you Yankees or Mets guy? I'm a Yankee fan. When was what was it like going to those games when you were a kid? I actually was had the opportunity to go to the old stadium that they knocked down in 1973. Mm-hmm. We used to take the train. Really. Uh, yeah, we would take the, the path train to 33rd Street, and then we'd take the F train up to 161st Street uh, through Harlem and all those other great, wonderful neighborhoods um, that are so filled with good, gracious Americans. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like? Who was some of the players back then? Oh, okay. When I used to go, I first time I got started going to games was like 1970. Okay, uh, it was Bobby Mercer, uh, Mel Stottlemyre. You might have heard noticed Stottlemyre named two of his kids pitched in the major leagues. Okay, you guys are a little young. Yeah, right? you're both virgins, right? <laughs> yes. Okay, my yeah, mom's no. listening. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am a virgin. Oh, sorry, Mr. I'm a Vigo. <laughs> I'm a bad influence on your son. I apologize. <laughs> no, you're uh, the best. Roy White, uh, Jerry Kenny, nobody worth a shit. Yeah. I mean, the last time they had one was like 63. That was the, the really, really bad time for the Yankees. They were in last place. Many one, people at the games? No. That really? Was fr- How much was a ticket? Out of the bleachers, 50 cents. You're shitting me. No. 50 cents. How a- much is a ticket now? Uh, well, the, Probably like 100. Well, the last time I went to a, a, a game that I had to pay for a ticket. I was when the first stadium, the new stadium opened up in 2009. To sit in right field where I had the opportunity to catch a home run ball was $120 for a ticket. 50 cents to $120. Yeah, yeah, and the beer was nine bucks. How when much I, was a beer when you went? <laughs> when I was a kid, they were a quarter. <laughs> and if you gave the guy a quarter, he'd give you one. <laughs> no ID necessary. Oh, no, I didn't do that back then. What, did, did you ever get to go to any of the, the World Series games? Or what was the city like when they were, the Yankees were on that run? Well, that was in the uh, early... Well, they didn't make it to the World Series until 76. Okay. Uh, and then they lost to Cincinnati. Um, and then they won in 78 and 79, 77 and, uh, and 78. But you, I, didn't, I went to games, but I didn't go to the playoff and World Series games. It was just too much money, even back then. That was just too much. Yeah, you had to pay the scalpers. Uh, it's not like it is now where you can go on StubHub. First right. of all, we didn't have cell phones. Yeah. Uh, you know, you had to go to Ticketmaster. Well, back then it was Ticketron, I think, uh, and hope to get a ticket. And, and you know, the g- tickets would go on, on sale at 10 o'clock in the morning, and at 10.01 they were sold out. What? Now, because, That's just scalpers picking them up and then... Yeah, well, everybody had... You know, everybody got to, got a piece, and they just gave them the tickets, and yeah. they were done. And the phone would just keep ringing and ringing. You had to buy them from them. Uh, and if a ticket was worth a hundred bucks, uh, if you wanted to go to the World Series, it was three hundred bucks. And back then, three hundred bucks was a lot of money. Yeah, shit, that's a lot of money these days. Yeah, well, <laughs> but you know, and then, uh, but we went to a lot, a lot of games. It was fun. I watched them play and. Uh, thing with the Yankees though was the owner was such a retard who was that who was the owner <laughs> George Steinbrenner oh you didn't like Steinbrenner no because he would spend so much money on crap players and then fired him like yeah. there was a guy he he got Ken Holtzman that he got in the trade from uh the the Baltimore Orioles and he didn't play him really he didn't play him the whole year he just sat out in the bullpen Something Holtzman said something to him he didn't like and he just went play. So, well, Yankees are that unique team right they're that team that you got to be clean shaven Yes. You gotta, they're, they're, and they still apply those rules today, right? Yeah. Was that kind of a Steinbrenner thing or what? what? No, that was always a Yankee thing. So Yankees were owned originally by a guy, uh, Rupert something, 
uh, not Murdoch, although he's fucking old enough. Um, <laughs> but the, then CBS bought them. The, the television? Yeah, they what? owned them. What? Really? They owned them from uh, until 1972, when they, 73, when they sold them to Steinbrenner. Really? It was very corporate, and a guy named Michael Burke was the guy who was running them for CBS. And um, they just, they used them as a tax write-off. There was one year in the, the early 70s, the Yankees drew 900,000 people. Wow. And that stadium used to hold 63,000, the old stadium. Really? Yeah, 900,000 for the year. I mean, it was ridiculous. Nobody and went. Nobody went? They and sucked, and, uh, you know, and we got to remember, too, back then, <laughs> the Bronx was a shithole. It's where they still played. a shithole, but they put lipstick on it. <laughs> but it was horrible, you know. Uh, everything was burnt out. Um, it was lawless. Yeah. So you took your life in your hands if you went to a game at night. No shit. Yeah. Or if you parked your car, you'd come back, you wouldn't find the tires. And you go to, it yeah, never happened to me, but I know people have to be, but it attended. <laughs> this is a closed lot. What happened to my tires? Oh, I don't know. I didn't see anything. Why? Did you come in with tires? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, tires. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then they went to the to the second stadium that was actually pretty nice. The one before. Well, it was the, the same one, one uh, but they refurbished it. It took oh, them two okay. years. Yankees played at Shea Stadium, which really sucked. Uh, it didn't have any. It just didn't feel like home. Right. Yeah, you know, the Mets were always you know for losers. Uh, yeah. Uh, for the most part, why you're a Mets fan? No, no, oh, okay. no. Okay, well, you know, you Twins, Minnesota Twins. I'm sorry. Even worse. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know they've struggled as of late, but yeah, they might win something next year. I mean, they got a good. They got a decent. They've had some good pickups. Yeah, they got a lot of good young talent. Yeah, you know, so they they have a shot. I mean, Yankees are of course over overloaded with all of these people, but yeah. the one thing the Yankees don't have is versatility with their players. You know, a lot of these players are one dimensional. Yeah, you know, like Andujar, he can hit. He, I don't know why they even buy him a glove. He, he might as well play barehanded. He'd probably play better, play better than he used to. Yeah. Uh, but you know, even Stanton, he's a bat. Yeah. You know, but you might as you know, he can't play the outfield. What did you think of the Astros thing? You know, I, I thought, God bless them for thinking of it. <laughs> yeah, come on. I, I, I you can't, can't tell me that everybody in major leagues is not cheating. I know. Yeah, it, it goes Either back. it's steroids or in the 70s it was Coke, amphetamines. Yeah. Uh, you know, please. Yeah. They just happen to get caught. Right. Yeah, you know, they don't have the luck the Patriots had. <laughs> well, the the freaking, uh, the, the domino effect. Now the Mets lost their Carlos Beltran. He's out now because yeah. of that. And then all these other players. And then I saw um, just like the Dodgers. The Dodgers maybe could have beat them. You know, now that they get, kind of got robbed. The thing I saw yesterday was interesting was the Pete Rose. Oh, Pete yeah. Rose is like, how the hell are you guys going to let the Astros play next year? And now I'm still out. I'm still that shit out of luck. Pete Rose is, a, in my opinion, a turd. Why? Uh, you don't know how to Pete Rose guy? No. Great player. Always was an asshole. Was he? He destroyed, you ever, you, you're young, but he destroyed Ray Fossey in a, in a uh, all-star game. What do you mean? It was like 70 or 71. We're in our all-star game. Fossey's the catcher. He's a friend of his. Pete Rose always missed Charlie Hustle. Comes around third. Fossey gets the ball, and he absolutely lays him out in an all-star game. Effectively destroyed Fossey's career. He was no. never the same after that. Who did just, Fossey play for? He was played for the Cleveland Indians, Ray Fossey. And he was he just didn't never come back through it he, he never could hit a, he was never the player after that he was he was in good defense he had a lot of injuries uh hurt his shoulder uh, back then if you hurt your shoulder they really couldn't operate on it right yeah you know, not totally like different. now and uh, he he was never the same and i after that i saw that i'm like this is an all-star game yeah. give me a break you don't lay the guy out and hurt him yeah and that's very true you know and then you then you uh bet on your own team you're yeah. a manager you can't bet right uh he can say all he wants that he, you know, he did everything by up and up. Yeah, okay. Sure. You keep saying that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about kind of your days with, what was it? It wasn't karate, but it was... Uh, Aikido. Aikido. Talk a little bit about that. I thought that was really interesting when you were talking about that. Yeah, go, Shin Aikido was a, was a self-defense art. Aikido okay. is something where you, it's basically means it's the, a way of life and spirit and harmony with the spirit of nature. And it's really designed for somebody big against uh, somebody small against somebody big, but I'm the outlier here. Wow, how yeah. tall are you, Tony? Six foot seven. You're six seven. Yeah, and I was six seven when you couldn't buy clothes. You know, you yeah. know. <laughs> good, good luck trying to find a suit when you're in 1977. You know. Yeah. Uh, or a shirt. What do you think that taught you as a person? Well, first of all, um, Aikido. 
Yeah. Oh, it taught me that you can rely on yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, it taught me that uh, everything you need is inside of you to succeed. Mm-hmm. Uh, it taught me respect other people. What do you mean by that? that you know, everybody's in this life uh, doing something or in a certain point, but they, everybody has struggles. Just because somebody, you shouldn't be envious of everybody because they're human beings. And right. even though they might hide it better, but everybody's got issues, you know? 100%. You know, like your, your mental issues and stuff, you know? Uh, <laughs> what, what else did you You, you were a lonely boy, right? When you were in that farm, just you, <laughs> the goats. Uh, Chickens. Okay. We had this donkey named Vanilla that was like my best friend. <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> I'd play football with her. God rest her soul. She'd always let me win. Did you, she rest her soul or did you eat her soul? <laughs> no, she... Mostly, that's why I always worry about you being a serial killer. <laughs> Because all your friends wound up on your dinner table. You know, I got a Dexter thing going here with you. That's why it's the first time I've ever been to your apartment and only when somebody else was here. <laughs> only when Nikki's here. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> well, I was still mad at you. So, <laughs> so, so after, okay, believe in yourself. Sorry, I got you sidetracked. But what else did you learn from, from the, your, your time there? Okay. I learned that you train to be a warrior so you don't have to be because you learn... Ooh. I don't think I like you that. any girl knows what's deep about you. <laughs> the roast. This is a roast. Damn. Sorry, sorry. No, it's no, just so good. much fun. You're leaving, I, you're you're the leaving them up there. I apologize. I know, I know. You know your audience. I'm trying to get deep for here, you, and you're just... <laughs> for your next podcast, know who you're talking to. I know. I know. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, you learn that uh, it's just... You treat people with respect, and, and yeah. you bring out all... Every day you do your best, right? But... You don't ever want, need to, the stronger you are internally, the less you need to uh, hurt somebody. Like you never want to physically ever hurt somebody. Right. Because you know what you can do. You can unleash hell. Uh, you know, and I was, you know, 280 pounds, six foot seven, you know, okay, and skilled. Uh, yeah. Now I'm old, uh, you know, but uh, you learn never to just to walk away and be strong inside. And it, it just gives you a good, good outlook on life, you know, that. Everything ex- exists within s- in you, and you, you, you use your source of energy, your resources, uh, you know, and believe in yourself. If you don't, if you don't believe in yourself, who's going to really believe in you? You have to be your own biggest fan, you know, and that's that's why I always liked about you. You were a confident guy, you know, and uh, even you know you you're just a good hearted person. And uh, that's why I always liked you because Thanks, I could man. see that you have like a good way about you and, and you care about your fellow man. I mean, you're friends with Andrew. I mean, <laughs> shout out Andrew Turner. He's a buddy of ours. <laughs> yeah. Um, basically he's bunchy from um, Ray Donovan come to life. Um, Andrew's first sale at that company we worked with was like, he said, Hey, I'm Andrew. Okay. Yeah. You know, here's $5,000. <laughs> yeah. That was and incredible. Then, yeah. Then he thinks he was, you know, uh, the guy from Apple, you know, uh, yeah, Steve could, Jobs. I, yeah. <laughs> I could sell anything. Yeah. <laughs> look at me. Yeah. He got all cocky and stuff. And he, he, yeah. And where are you now? <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what's been the biggest, Tony, what's been the biggest test of your life personally that you've, you've had to overcome that, that's something you're like, man, I, this is going to be tough. Uh, my biggest test has been trying to forget some of the things I did as a kid. Yeah. You know, that kind of stuff, that whole thing, because that's a real negative part of my life. Yeah. You know, all of that stuff. Um, just dealing with people like, uh, like my father, I, I knew him outside of the house mm-hmm. in the house. I mean, I really didn't know him, you know, and, and as a six year old being exposed to, you know, making coffee and punching cards and collecting money and all that other stuff. That's bullshit. Right. You know, uh, his thing was they were raised where they, they were taught stuff from young. Yeah. You know, but there was a different world. You know, this wasn't the depression anymore. This was just, that's all he knew, you know. Uh, so, yeah, that was kind of tough to get over some of those things and try to... Aikido helped me do that a that's lot. That's I was just going to ask. That had to help. Yeah, that's what really got me up. But, you know, just the fact that uh, and growing up in... in uh, a crappy little town, you know, surrounded by, you know, industry. It wasn't very residential. But you got out. You got out. You know, now you're happily. I mean, how long have you been married? 36 years. Wow. Yeah. And she didn't need a green card or anything. 
<laughs> yeah, she, she was a citizen, and I was surprised. Well, you're a citizen, and you, you want to go did, out with me? What the hell? How did you meet? meet uh, I met her at my cousin Judy's wedding, my wife Lucille. Uh, we met at a wedding, and uh, we happened to sit at the same table. Really? Yeah, and I even asked her to dance. And if you've ever seen me dance, uh, you will know what a what a stretch that was. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and uh, I actually really liked her from the the, the, the get go. And uh, she, she had come with my the grooms. I mean, the bride's parents. They were friends. That's how they wound up being at the wedding. And then they couldn't take her home, so I took her home with my whole family. And, really? Yeah, and if and she was in the car. And after I dropped them off, I had to take her home the rest of the way. And she was like, bang, still, she, chicken, bang. <laughs> well, easy. That's my wife you're talking about. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I don't want to get thrown through do this. You know how to use a, do you know how to drive a wheelchair with your tongue? <laughs> no, seriously. No. Okay, can you spell quadriplegic? <laughs> okay, so let's not do that again. That so, wasn't so, a threat. <laughs> that, that was just uh, alternate universe. That's all. Uh, but anyway, okay. only kidding. He knows that. I know, I know. Uh, um, and uh, I drove her home, and it's like she still talked to me after these people got out of the car. Really? And, oh, yeah. I, I wanted to. Uh, when they were in the car, I was about 5'2", just listening yeah. to my father telling me how to drive. <laughs> oh, shit. Making his jokes. My Aunt Rose in the back. My Aunt Rose was one of those old ladies that used to like bathe in Avon perfume. <laughs> Holy shit! We, no, and I, nobody could smoke in the car when she was in there. The whole place would have just blown up. <laughs> no, seriously, uh, you know, it was it was tough. And I didn't even because they were she was in the car and she knew my family. I didn't even ask her for a phone number. Really? How'd you ah. get her on a second date? Oh well, my cousin knew, and then I said, you know, well, she was in the car. I started thinking about it, and she still said, you know, she still talked to me after meeting these people. Yeah, yeah, that's that's incredible. Uh, and uh, so I asked my cousin, and she gave her my number, and she gave me a call, and uh, we went out. We met on November seventh. We got engaged for New Year's of that year. So you asked, how did you ask her to marry her? I said, Will you marry me? <laughs> Did you get down on you, one knee? You haven't gotten to that we, point we, yet. <laughs> no, I don't even have a girlfriend. Well, hourly women, you know, they, they they just want the money and go, <laughs> you know. So, how? Sorry, Mrs. Hanson. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, now and then you guys had two beautiful kids. Yes, uh, one girl, one one son, right? Yes. And your son is a ref. Yes. Want to tell the people a little? No, bit no, about? no. We're ref. That makes him seem like he just came over the fucking border. <laughs> no, that's a, he's a college and high school football referee and he's trying to become he's trying to move up to like d1 right yeah yeah he is eventually that's how fun goal. is that to to your, see your son on tv just well make sure you get that mic next to your face there, he there you loves go. it so much you know he's really dedicated like there's some days he's got to get on a saturday you see i gotta get up at four in the morning to drive to pittsburgh area to do a game yeah. or down to virginia and um it was he puts puts his he's really paying his dues he really is yeah um and um uh, He'll he'll do fine. Uh, yeah. The guy who he's I can't mention names, but the guy who taught him and is now good friends with him is a side judge, uh, side judge in the NFL. Really? Yeah, and he's given him a lot of advice. He's helped him tremendously. Uh, he he keeps in touch with him. Now my son talks to him all the time. They'll, they'll go over you know, scenarios. What'd you see at this play? They'll send tape to each. You know, he'll send tape to him. Yeah. So he's he's had a lot of people willing to help him because he's willing to take it seriously. Right. So he you know he made it. Uh, he was in college one year, and he, they made, he became the referee. He just liked it from. He just wanted to be around the game. He Was loved football. Kind of yeah. Absolutely loved football, and uh, he always knew all the plays. He knew uh, yeah. where everybody was supposed to be. You watch football with him, and. Uh, you know, he'd, he'd know what was coming. And now with the referee, and he'll say, he missed this call, played his back, you know, when he was here for Christmas. We're watching games. He goes, look at this, look at this. That's why he made that call. See, yeah. you know, he's he really, really, really into it. He's a student of the game. You're pretty proud of him. Yeah, he just got his master's degree in finance. Wow. Yeah, and awesome. uh, he's, he's doing great. Now, I remember, you know, what, what what position did he play in high school football? He played left tackle, and then he played middle linebacker. Okay. Yeah. So and he, then for the last game of the, that they played, he, he was the quarterback. He could always throw, yeah. uh, but he was the biggest kid in the school. Yeah. So he should have been the quarterback. He was a great pitcher in high school uh, for baseball. He had a great arm. Yeah. Uh, but they had nobody, uh, no size. No size. Yeah. They it was needed. one of those little Bergen County schools. Uh, it's still a borough. Uh, yeah. You know. Still 10 times bigger from where you went. <laughs> where Crosby, yeah. Yeah. What was your graduating class for? Did that include the teacher? <laughs> no, we had, oh God, I think we had 36. 
In the whole school or a graduating no, class? my class. Um, was that a county school or something? It's called Divide County High School. Yeah, there was 36 of us, and we were one of the bigger ones. Okay. We were one of the bigger schools. Really? But it was awesome because me and my friends, my friend Trevor and my friend- You don't have a sister, right? I'm an only child. Oh, because you didn't have a date for the prom. <laughs> oh, I, shit. I knew that was coming. He's done that one to me before. It's, see, Tony and I used to work at a company called Zip Recruiter, yeah. and we would sit at lunch- and we would just go back and, and forth. And Andrew used to just play with his zipper. <laughs> That's why he took the job. He thought he could play with his zipper all day because he goes, oh, wow, oh, this people, is fun. People used to just sit by us at lunch. Andrew didn't have to worry about getting anything caught in a zipper either, <laughs> by the way. People used to just sit with us at lunch to listen to us just go back and forth. It was like a comedy show. It yeah, really was. That's what we did. That's why we had so much fun. Oh, that's why that job was the best. Yeah. I, not the job sucked, yeah, but well, but the half hour lunch that they gave us was, was the best. And we'd sit there with Skyler and you know, I would look forward to just coming in and talking to you. Yeah, big angry, we, we, big angry Skyler. He's the only man I ever met that was bigger than me. Although I went to the bathroom with him, he wasn't. <laughs> yeah, but uh, what could I say? The what, truth is the truth. The truth is the truth. And um, but no, to go back, it, it was a fun. I had a, went to a small school, yeah, but it was fun because we everybody knew everybody, and oh yeah, we would just imitate the whole the state. Got five thousand people. Didn't everybody know everybody? <laughs> yeah, but there's good people back there. I mean, yeah, it's hardworking, yeah, real Americans. Real, no, I know blue collar. I'm making fun, but you know, to, yeah. just with you. But yeah. no, no, yeah, people there that have been there generationally, right? They don't leave. They take over the the family business. Yeah, and that's cool. 100%. It's just, it's so different for me to But it's go, a hard life with it's the a weather, hard life. isn't it? Well, it's it's very cold in the winter, yeah. yeah. Um, but like summer times are fun because that's when the farming comes up. And it's just fun because I, I worked for a farmer. Um, and the girls wear, take their coats off, you can actually see if they're doable <laughs> yeah. or not, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, in the wintertime, you know, you just, you never just, see them, right? It's a guessing game, 50-50. Yeah. <laughs> but it's fun because, you know, you, you work hard during the day and, and it's fun because you meet up at the, the Ambrose Saloon or Joey's Bar and just have a beer and talk about life where down here... I mean, you don't really have that atmosphere. And that's kind of been tough for me to adjust. I mean, you go, shit, you can go to- Do you guys have a Walmart? It's an hour away in Williston. It's an hour away. It's an, the nearest McDonald's is an hour away. But shout out McDonald's in Williston because it was the busiest in the world during the oil boom. That Walmart and McDonald's were the busiest ever. Like that Walmart- I just say this because this is what people who listen get a little perspective on just actually how you grew up. Oh, yeah. And explain why you are the way you are. <laughs> He was a lonely child, right? <laughs> you know, and they'd, they'd give him a chicken and he'd play with it for a while and then they'd cut it up and he'd- Supper's he'd, here. <laughs> he'd eat the legs and stuff. It was terrible. Oh, no, I did not. You don't like the legs? I never really messed around with them. I've never ate a chicken leg. What? No, you have? Everybody in the world is eating a chicken leg. <laughs> I guess we'll have to do that tonight. What are you, an alien? <laughs> Where'd you come from? I, what's the craziest thing you've ever actually done? Let's not answer that. No, you know. <laughs> I don't want to know that. <laughs> I don't want to know no, that. No, no, no. We'll get raided or whatever. <laughs> it's just some things you can't say. What are some closing? Did you graduate the tech school yet? Oh, unfortunately. Yeah, okay. Well. I don't know how dude, Nikki, Nikki is. I'm making Nick. fun of Nikki. Nikki's fantastic. Oh, he man. is great, dude. He's Nick and I talked about this podcast, shit, man, two years ago. And it's finally coming to fruition. He's been a big proponent of it. He's do I get to come back friends. someday? Yeah, fuck yeah, you do. Hell Can I yeah. watch the one when you do it with Andrew? I don't know. That's going to be do thirty seconds. <laughs> Andrew, what'd you do as a child? Uh, I played with my penis. <laughs> oh. And then, then when I got older, it started getting messy. And my mother used to say, "Andrew, what are say you doing with allegiance. your socks? <laughs> what is this stuff on it? Oh, it's glue." <laughs> That don't look like Elmer's glue. So then he started licking it. I don't know what the fuck's going You know, and so what? that's why Andrew's the way he is. And someday I hope you get to see him on camera. I know. I, we should and Andrew, Turner. even at my age, I will kick your ass on your best day and my worst day. I will drink your blood. Except the drugs that you take. Uh, I don't know if I want them in my system, but I'll let it sp That door over there has been replaced because of Andrew punched a hole in it. He punched a hole in your oh, wall? Yeah, there's a video. I'll you have show a balcony you. here. Why didn't he get thrown off it? <laughs> he, sh he should have that day, but yeah, he, there was a few beverages involved that day. And Turner. Oh, yeah. And, Wait, he, when Turner and he missed his pharmaceuticals that keep him like <laughs> habitable with the world. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Well, Tony, let's 
to close this out, tell me what you'd like to leave with swim lessons. What's I like? To, I like to have every guest, you know, kind of just leave with a slogan, something they live by, something that they use every day. Because you're a warrior, man. You get through every day. You grind it out. You've been married for 32 years. You've got two great kids. You're 36 years. Oh, sorry, 36. <laughs> 36 years. Not paying attention. Did you take notes? <laughs> Fucking Larry King's got nothing to worry about, you know? I am I want to be like Howard. Really? I mean, I'd like to be. I, I look up to Joe Rogan and Howard Stern. Yeah, 100%. What? Howard Stern, real quickly. Yeah. I mean, everybody knows him as a shock jock. Yeah. But the man is actually incredible. Uh, he's a genius. Yeah. First of all, he made himself practically a billionaire. Yeah. Uh, and also, he's an incredible interviewer. He does yeah. some great interviews. I well, saw him not too long ago. He was on Bill Maher. And he took over Bill Maher's show for a, he kept them, you know, the first guest is always 10 minutes. Yeah. He was on for a half hour and he was talking to the audience. You don't want me to leave, do you? Really? Oh, yeah, he took over Bill Maher's show. Because cool. Howard's yeah. just got a way to like, he gets questions out of people that normally don't. I mean, yeah. anytime he just, he's got a way. I don't know if it's like the setting that he's created or just his voice or how he looks at someone. He just gets shit out of people that other other journalists can't. Right. It's incredible. But what would you like to leave the folks here with a swim lesson? It's kind of just to, to sum up the way you live your life, the way you do things that you do that maybe somebody out there can take and, and use in their life. Okay. And all the joking around and stuff. But, but I really live my life is I'm not competing with you. I'm competing with me every day. I want to be better than I was yesterday. And my focus is inside. And I, don't, I try to eliminate the rest of the world because I know what I can do. I don't have to be jealous of you. I want to cheer you on. You yeah. know, I want you to do better because that's your journey. But I want to do my best for me. That's beautiful, Tony. Uh, no, tell me, what are you? What's your? What's my to? life? I, I, I'm a lot like I'm trying to figure that out. That's kind of why I'm doing this. Do show. You know that's which what bathroom I'm... to go in? I mean, did you have that figured out? <laughs> yes. Okay. I, the, the, okay, men, women, you. you know I have who you that. Are. Yeah. <laughs> I have that far. You're not having these thoughts that maybe no, you got a squat no. to pee or anything. <laughs> no, no, hell oh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. You, you didn't know who you were. And I, another thing is, I don't know if they could see it on this the thing. The Stevie Nicks shirt. You have a Stevie Nicks shirt. This is a woman that's old enough to be your grandmother or your great-grandmother, and you're having impure thoughts about her. I mean, what the fuck does that say about you? <laughs> I love Fleetwood Mac. That's like my favorite band. One, and Post Malone. Post Malone and Fleetwood well, Mac. Yeah, well, yeah, Fleetwood Mac must have been the hot band when you were a kid up in Crosby, right? I wasn't even, I'm maybe, I wasn't born until now. Well, no, no, they didn't get to there until Oh, long. my God. Here we go. Oh, well, really? Come on. <laughs> But I appreciate, thank you for uh, having me here. I, I, I'm honored to be the first one to do it. I hope I didn't get you thrown off no, the air or no. anything. No, right. But anyway, no, it was you fun. Did, you did fantastic, Tony. You're a great human being. We will don't definitely lie. have don't you. Lie. You are, dude. Don't lie. These people don't know no, me. They man, don't. No, you are. And I cannot wait to have you back. If, if you'll come back, you'll come back, won't you? No, of course. And uh, we'll talk a little bit and more. We'll have, actually have a dialogue what we're going to talk about. Yeah, that sounds okay. good. Well, I just, I like. By the way, he. Uh, Dallas is uh, going to be a father with a girl named Joanna. No, <laughs> I'm not. You bastard. <laughs> well, it's either Joanna. him or the other six guys that were in that conga line that were going in and jo out. But uh, Joanna, Joanna, I never. Don't say her last name. I, I won't. Joanna. Although was, this won't be on. I didn't even kiss her. Okay. But I always told you. you I know, know. You should go out with her so you have somebody to clean your apartment, <laughs> clean your pipes. I mean, come on. Tony, it's been a pleasure, I'm brother. Sorry. No, no, you're good. We're just uh, running out of time. Okay, it's, it's been a pleasure. I love you, man. Thank you very much for I'm coming. I'm not saying on. I love you too on, on air. I'll tell you later. A little French kiss, maybe. <laughs> a little something, something. But hey, thanks for being the first guest on Swim Lessons. I we'll see you down it. the road. It's brother. an honor. And someday when this is really big and you're on HBO, I can always look back and say, "Hey, I was there with him." I was the first. Yeah, fuck yeah, you can. All right, man. Take it. Episode one complete. I told you it's gonna be a party.